hardest thing I could possibly do was try to actually find a way to make solar energy cheaper. Um, and, and that's an incredibly arrogant thing to think that you could do that. I can do something that no one else has achieved yet. I was working for Doctors at Borders and I was living in the Congo and I didn't want to come straight back to Canada. I was a little bit sort of uh, in between. The whole time I was looking at going back to Africa. And then my, my dad, he pointed out to me that going back to Africa was something that I couldn't fail at doing. And he said, you have to think of what the hardest thing that you could possibly do at this time and the most valuable thing that you could possibly do and do that. The only thing that I could do that would actually be as worthwhile as that. Uh, would be if I could make solar power uh, inexpensive enough for everyone, including uh, my friends in Africa, uh, uh, to afford. While I had been living there, I had observed painfully how much lack of access to electricity led directly to almost enslavement. You come to realize that uh, what we take for granted, this access to sort of easy power and energy, it is just so liberating. You know, it's a human right. And so it was kind of this decision to try to take on the biggest challenge I could imagine, coupled with a sort of fearlessness. So this wasn't a situation where I came in, I'd invented something, and I was trying to find a way to fit it into a, I was looking for a market for something that I invented. It wasn't that situation at all. I looked at the industry, and I looked at the way different technologies worked, and how much they cost, and, and what drove their costs, and, and where the materials came from, what mines in the world they came from. And then I also looked at what machines do they use for production? And I said, right, okay, I need to find a way to develop a solar technology, any solar technology, that will use only commodity materials. They'll only use materials that are really widely available. So that when I start getting to gigawatts and gigawatts, which is what I was thinking at that time, my use of that material doesn't start to push the price up. So I said, right, I'm gonna limit myself to only being able to use uh, machines and processes that are commodity machines and processes, as well as the materials. And so I fixated on the kinds of processes that are used in automotive. The technical challenge was to figure out how to constrain the problem correctly, so that whatever it is that we did develop and invent would be something we could then uh, scale and bring to market and uh, answer the cost problem, which is the fundamental problem. Uh, we figured out a way to build you know, sheets of material, so very, very thin sheets of, of plastic. All the light that strikes that sheet gets trapped inside the sheet and conducted in to, to a single point at the center where it is then converted into electricity by one of these compound semiconductor cells. By virtue of the fact that we're conducting the light in the form of light and not converting it to electricity over a large area, we become a lot more defect resistant. Uh, we're able to use the most high, highly efficient cell designs in the world and we use one one thousandth the area. So we end up spending uh, four times less for the semiconductor than you would if you were trying to build a silicon solar panel. The remainder of our materials are actually not that much more expensive than the remainder of the materials on a silicon solar panel. Yeah, they're good problems to have, having to uh, bring, try to bring a disruptive technology into a market. You have to convince yourself that it actually is gonna work. All the computer models in the world don't prepare you for reality. Um, and the truth is our first prototype didn't work. And neither did our second or our third. Uh, it took us a while to kind of figure out that it was working and that we weren't all crazy. And then you have to convince, you know, your venture capitalists. And we raised money during the worst year to raise money. I'm going to say in the history of humanity. We'd go to VCs and they're like, you know what, it's a new world out there and you got a new technology, it's unproven, and therefore your company is basically worthless. We'll give you like 20 bucks for the whole thing. Like people were making ridiculously low offers. And we just had to suck it up and uh, I'd say no. As far as banks and customers go, you just have to be prepared to prove it and to prove it again and again and again and to be wide open. There can be no secret sauce. You just have to be obvious with what you're doing. Uh, you have to be honest about mistakes. We sent a prototype down to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Colorado uh, way back when, a really early prototype, and the thing caught fire. So there was, we used something in there that was not rated to go up to the temperature that it went to and boom, and it, you know, it was a learning experience and, and we laugh about that. In order to get to the point where banks will loan money to our customers to buy our panels, which is the only way solar farms get built. People don't build these things out of pocket, they use bank financing. That requires a series of very carefully 
uh, planned and executed tests and demonstrations and validations by third parties that we're carrying out right now. And it's, it's a long-term plan that requires just a lot of organization, a lot of patience, and a lot of hard work.